Graham Kendall's non-fiction book, To the Ice and Beyond, is set for its third reprint in the two years since it was first published. In it, Graham details his story of becoming the first Kiwi yachtsman to circumnavigate the globe via the Northwest Passage solo. His achievements for being the first and fastest to complete the journey are in the process of receiving a Guinness World Record. And it is really great to have you in the studio, Graham. Welcome. Thank you. Thank All you seems very me. tame after <laughs> sailing a boat around the world like that. Uh, was this a boyhood dream of yours? Not so much a boyhood dream, but something that um, formulated as I got older and had more sailing experience and uh, things fell into place a few years ago and that's the result. What was the pathway in terms of I'm going to do this to wow, I'm actually doing it? Because I assume you don't just wake up one morning, decide to get in a boat and go. No, it's, a, it's, a, <laughs> it's about a three or four year uh, plan and obviously has to be planned correctly so that when you do go out there you don't feel as though you've made a mistake and let other people down because you have quite a responsibility obviously with family and friends. Yeah, you yeah. certainly do. Yeah, Speaking yeah. of family, what do they think about it? We suggested, uh, hey, guess what I'm to do, guys? <laughs> they probably thought the idea might go away, but uh, nobody really said it was bad or assumed that um, um, I shouldn't do it, so it seemed to just gel as it went through the process. You're obviously the sort of person who likes a challenge, because most of us wouldn't, wouldn't do something like this lightly. Yeah, it's, it's been interesting. People often ask why I did it, and, and it's a question that I can't define or answer correctly but um, I think it's because of the sailing experience I had and it just seemed to feel as though I was um, I'd done my apprenticeship and this was the final exam. So what sort of experience did you have before you went into the solo thing? A lot of a lot of cruising, a lot of racing, um, sailing in parts of the world, solo Melbourne Osaka yacht race, whip bread, yeah. so sailed with a few of the people that are still sailing internationally. What always intrigues me too about solo sailing is it takes a certain kind of person to pull it off because being out there all those days on your own with no contact really from anyone, it can be a, quite a defining experience, can't it? It can be, but if you know that you've set up properly and it's, and it's not going to last forever, you know that it's going to finish at a certain yeah. time, and then having the boat set up with communication like telephone, so people could call me and I could call them and then people knowing that you're okay. Uh, so that was that sort of made it easily, more oh, easy. I'm assuming it didn't come without its challenges, its hairy moments. What were some of them? A hurricane in the Atlantic was, was something to be uh, avoided, but I didn't avoid it. I, w I had to wade my way through it and go through plan A, B and C. And on your own? On my own until I got to plan F, which you can imagine what that means. Yeah, yep. <laughs> Pretty much can. And you hit an iceberg? Had an iceberg, yeah, well I was asleep when I hit the iceberg, I thought the water was clear and I'd, I'd travelled about two or three hours and woke up with the boat shuddering to a stop. Is that terrifying when you're sailing it with is when you're asleep. You? It is when you're asleep and you hit one, yeah. yeah. How yeah. was the boat protected against that though? Because, uh, you know, there are famous stories about that not going so well, mm. but obviously... Uh, the boat was built of Kevlar and it had Kevlar cap on the bow, it had a steel keel that was retractable. It had a rudder on the back that could be lifted. So, so it's super strong and uh, really, really purpose-built for these conditions. Everything purpose-built. Everything on the boat was had two of things and didn't have things that could break down, like water maker or refrigeration. Um, had a, a steel keel, as I said. Mm. What were some of the most amazing things you saw? Because there's a bit of wildlife along the way. Birds were an indelible part of the trip because there was, a apart from the area over the Beaufort Sea, there were birds around the boat every day. But of course, wildlife, whales and walruses, the odd polar bear on the shore, yeah. One of the things about sailing solo too is uh, the fact that you've got to talk to yourself, but you have to keep watch all the time so you don't get to tag team with others to sleep. How much did you sleep and did sleep deprivation really start to play a bit of a part with things? There were times where you had to stay awake, but there were obviously times where it was safe to go to sleep for six hours. Sometimes five minutes was all I could catch by standing on the back of the chair. So the boat is set up basically with autopilot, so that running most of the time on autopilot, but with a radar alarm and a, a depth alarm and a wind alarm, um, those things allowed you to sleep. Did you learn anything about yourself in, in being so solitary? Yeah, I'm not a very good poet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I, I found that um, at the end of the day, having a rum at five o'clock, which I used to do, um, I'd discuss 
the the day b previous day and, and say how good it was and that how good condition everything was and how much I was enjoying it. Uh, just one thing I want to ask is, was it odd coming home? No, it wasn't really. I mean, uh, getting close to home was probably I was more nervous then than any other part of the trip because I was so close to home that if something had broken on the boat, it would have prevented me from completing what I wanted to do. Um, but coming home was, yeah, I was I slotted in quite easily to friends and the boat was prepared and sold in the, in the new year. And went out the next day though? We went out the next day after <laughs> I'd come back and that was, that was really part of the preparation of the whole trip that everything on the boat was, was well designed and well researched. Yeah. Would you do it again? Not that particular trip, no. Painting another one? Uh, I can't say. KG, <laughs> uh, Graham's book to the ice and beyond is available right now in, in bookstores and you can also order a copy via his website as well. Thank you so much, Graham. Welcome, thank you. Thank, thank you. you.